Palace of Justice in Paris saw towards the end of last summer the trial of a man whose destiny paralleled the destiny of France. Marshal Pétain had been one of the great generals and heroes of the war that ended in 1918. The people who crowded the Palace of Justice for his trial had once held him in their highest esteem as a soldier and a patriot. The Marshal was tried for his life on a charge of intelligence with the enemy. The surroundings of a French court are different from those of a court in the United States, but the purposes and the ends of the court are the same. Newspaper men watching the arrivals at the palace saw three judges and 24 jurors. Twelve of the jurors were former members of parliament, and the trial itself had been preceded by a long examination of the prisoner. For the view from his rooms in Vichy, where he had ruled France for two years, the marshal exchanged a barred window and the view of a deep courtyard. The greatest French legal talent waited to examine the prisoner. Newspaper men representing readers from all over the world filled the press benches. And all the premiers who had ruled France in the dark years before the war had been called to testify. Pétain entered the court wearing the uniform of a marshal with a single decoration. His moustache was neatly clipped. He had the complexion of a man who had been well fed. He was 89 years old. He had come there, he said, only to vindicate his honor. Solicitor General Mornay, the man who had convicted Mata Hari in the last war, wanted to question more than the old man's honor. Why had he, Pétain, spoken publicly of Germany's crusade for civilization? Why had he been unwilling to fight Germany? Why had he humiliated France? Why had he refused to help the English? Why had he learned of the Allied landings in North Africa with stupefaction and sorrow? Why had he, above all, surrendered the French armies to the enemy? Attorney for the defense, Isorny, said that the Marshal would make no plea for mercy, a noble sentiment that was met coldly by witnesses of a younger generation who had seen the Marshal's code of honor in terms of crematoriums, torture instruments, hunger, and disgrace. Former Premier Deladier added to the picture of an old man who had used his prestige, his blue eyes, and his personality for the defeat of his own country. Former Premier Renault said that the greatest mistake of his life had been his faith in Pétain. He said that he despised the Marshal. Pétain's defense was that while he outwardly collaborated with the Germans, he had wanted in his heart to help the Allies. His remarks were hissed, and feeling rang so high that several advocates had to be evicted from the courtroom. The despicable Laval, who had been extradited from Spain, testified in the Marshal's defense. As the bulk of the evidence began to take shape, it became clear that more than the trial of an old man, this was the trial of a class, a nation, a way of thinking. It was a way of thinking, as former Premier Leon Blum said, that had led France into a nightmare of fear. It was a way of thinking based on indifference to defeat, and that secret hope that out of defeat, would spring an authoritarian state that would abolish labor unions, discriminate against minorities, lower wages, and secure the privileges of the rich. It was a way of thinking that surrendered the nation of France to the enemy and left the country a physical and spiritual ruin. It was a way of thinking for which the old marshal was tried and he was sentenced to death. General de Gaulle commuted the sentence to imprisonment for life and it will be in a prison on an island off the coast of France that someday the old marshal and his way of thinking will die.